This is the Blockade Pimple Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, it's Jared Morgan. Hey, yeah, Chris. Hey, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Yeah. So guess what today is, Jared, uh, around these parts? Um, you're never going to guess. <laughs> I don't know, but I know what day it is for me around these parts. How about you go first? So it's National Cinema Day. Oh, okay. And to celebrate National Cinema Day, all the movie... Th- well, I shouldn't say all the movie theaters, but you're the three biggest players here in the States um, are all doing $3 movie day. Any format, any d- showtime, any movie. Wow, $3. So I already went to the movies today at 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be going again later on. Yes, I will. <laughs> um, <laughs> because they just released... Uh, uh, a reissue of Jaws, but in 3D. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Well, and okay, that seems out of the blue. But m- right, um, me liking 3D films though, and uh, having never seen Jaws on the big screen to begin with. Well, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? Yes, it is. So I went yeah. and uh, enjoyed myself some of that. Um, interestingly enough, so seeing it in 3D. It didn't really add anything to the film. It mm. thankfully didn't distract from the film either. Yeah. Um, it's just kind of there, which completely makes sense because, you know, the movie came out in 1975. It wasn't exactly like uh, they had any intention of it ever being converted into 3D. Mm. Um, no way. So they, it, it's very much a depth only. N- absolutely nothing pokes out at you at any, any point in the film. Um, even when there's, there was like one or two opportunities where I thought, oh, they could have had it come out at you, but they didn't. Um, Mm -hmm. so it's purely all about depth. Uh, but the nice thing is because film editing was so much slower back then and you could just sit in a scene before it cut to another angle, Mm. it means it was very easy to watch in 3d because your eye had time to adjust just to the perspective. find the characters and and enjoy it that way so um it was it was kind of cool seeing that but uh you know the main thing was just being able to see it on the big screen which again i'd never seen it in that way and no. there was <laughs> there's the uh, everybody knows it as the the jump scare moment that spielberg regrets having had to put in the movie when he did because he would have rather had the chumming jump scare moment uh, be the first scare of the movie, but it was too long into the movie, so that's why he chose to use the other one. Um, but even that little jump scare moment, which I knew was coming, I was like, oh, here it comes, here it comes. It still made me kind of pop in the seat. All right. Just because in full surround, with the audio kicking, and having that image be that large on the screen. <laughs> it's like, whoa. It worked. It worked. I, yeah, I, I, was right. like, I was like, I knew it was coming. I full on was like, here it comes. It's right there. I'm waiting for them. And then, and it still made me kind of, whoa. <laughs> like, kind of, it, it's interesting that it uh, was still effective in that manner. It's interesting you say that because I think for a lot of these movies that you know people probably have only really experienced on DVD or Blu-ray yeah. now and you know while TVs are you know big now they're not that big they they they're not they're not movie screen big and no. that's sort of how the directors could, like made the movie they made it for the big screen not for you know the video you know <laughs> not for a phone <laughs> not for a phone oh no you wouldn't why would you do that um <sighs> Yeah, I, get mad, I get mad at people that are watching stuff just on laptops. I'm like, yeah, you're watching it on a 17 inch screen. Maybe usually more like a 15 inch screen. Uh, That's it's going to lose good. all impact. Yeah. The, the one thing that I, I said I would, I swore I would do when I got my VR headset is hire movies in 3d and watch them in VR. I never did that. Of course, mm-hmm. but you know, that, that might be a, a substitute for for you know watching some of these things in in 3D and experiencing one what a simulated big screen right yeah well so, yeah because you know, at least it's dominating your entire field of view mm. and that's the that's the impact isn't it like yeah. it's about it's about that like full immersion I had a know. friend who um, yeah. 
he watched a lot of movies in VR. <laughs> All right, yeah. Drove me. I, I was just like, I was always just like, I don't know how you can do it because the resolution just isn't there. But he was like, mm. yeah, but it's great for watching in 3D. And I'm like, yeah, but the resolution still isn't there. But one of the things that he would do is he would watch it in cinema mode, which yes. is actually having seats and there being a screen. Yeah. And, I've done that before. And he would watch it in that way. So he could it was still giving him a movie theater experience, you might say. Yeah, I, I watched uh I I tried that out and and sat and watched just some it was just some free T V channels that were on there. Yeah. Um that was streaming old uh, syndicated shows. And it was quite good. L- like having this screen actually does feel really big and it mm-hmm. really does feel like you're in a cinema. So the effect does work. And with a decent set of headphones on, you know, you actually get a pretty good experience. Sure. Yeah. I'm, uh, we're going to circle back around to the VR in a second. Um, mm-hmm. there's something that, that recently popped up. Uh, but, um, yeah, the, the other movies I'm planning on going to seeing today, there is a, a new George Miller f- film called, uh, 3000 years of longing. Uh, yeah, that's uh, a reinterpretation of the whole genie trope, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. But uh, it being George Miller, who you might know as the man behind Mad Max, uh, mm. the trailer is absolutely gorgeous looking. and It looks uh, really good, the movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the other one, which I've, <laughs> I've literally not seen one clip of, uh, Bullet Train with uh, Brad Pitt. Oh, yeah. yeah. I just know that the director is the same guy behind uh, Deadpool 2, and uh, he was the co-director on, uh, I think, the first two John Wick movies. Okay. Um, he's so former, he knows he's how a, to he's, do well, he's a, he's a, he's a, uh, the Both the directors on John Wick were uh, former stunt coordinators. Um, that's why their stunts are so good Amazing. in their movies. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and from what I could tell, just reading Bullet Train is literally just like, all right, here's Ball 10 minutes of this stunts. kind of stunt. Now here we're going to do 10 minutes of this kind of stunt. <laughs> That's what I got it from it too. Yeah, I so, looked at the trailer I went, this is just back-to-back stunts yeah. rolled into one cinematic length thing. Yeah. You know. Um, so that's probably going to be the the other two that I try and check out today. But um, the VR thing. So <laughs> we won't even talk about the $100 price increase on uh, Quest 2. Uh, yeah, they which just is absurd. That up. Uh, yeah, for no different hardware. It's just the same. But to me, and and I'm sorry, it has nothing to do with demand because you can readily get one of those things right now. Uh, mm-hmm. It seems to me like they bumped up the price just so they could put it on sale at Christmas time for that same oh, price. Probably done a classic. <laughs> uh, 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 what up arcade? Okay, one up. Yes, exactly. Um, uh. But the other thing is, is I'm sure it has something to do with the the Meta's you know codename Cambria or whatever right around the corner. Um, because that's going to be so much more expensive mm. that by raising the price of the Quest 2, it makes it so that it's not quite more expensive. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Yeah, um, you're probably right. Like, that is around the corner, and we don't know a lot about it. Um, well, I mean, there's, there's a ton of leaks that have come out about it. Um, yeah. That sound really, really nice. Yeah, um, they've done a lot of it. They've done a lot of good things in there, too, like improved resolution and stuff. But that's a... That's a whopping price tag. I won't be getting one. I'll just say it now. I'm not going to be upgrading my headset. I've already said that, that, well, especially now that they raised the price of the the Quest 2, um, I'll just be waiting for the Quest 3. The Quest 3? Yeah, when it takes everything that they're throwing into Cambria, uh, they figure out how to do the less expensive version of it and, you know, throw Mm. it into that, which means, you know, full-color AR uh, camera, uh, thinner um, lens, so yeah, more, thinner, light, more lightweight headset, uh, faster pancake processor instead of um, and pancake lenses instead of the Fresnel lenses. Yeah, yeah, all that. You know, all these sort of enhanced. Yeah, um, yeah it, look, it's. I would probably be in the same boat as well. Like I actually put the the headset on the other day because I had to set up my Meta account, um, and they recommended you don't set up like link your Meta account with your like Facebook Oculus mm-hmm. account. They said you don't do that until you've actually upgraded your headset, and um, uh, and then you do the the sort of changeover. So I did that, and I thought, oh, I'll chuck on Star Wars VR pinball, and give that a go. 
as well. And I still, I still like pinball and VR. Like it's, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's much better. <laughs> it's just that the, the, the VR build, like the, the non PC VR build of Star Wars VR. It's when you look at, um, uh, pinball effects on PC, it, it's just incomparable. Like, ah. Oh. It, it it's noticeably lower fidelity mm-hmm. in in every way, and you know, a, aliasing and everything aside, which I've commented on before, like I think that's just part and parcel of VR at the moment until the resolution bumps. But it's still, yeah, it's, it, yeah the the native VR on Quest Two using the Android build, it's it's obviously less. So, and and that was my one of my initial reasons for why I was like not jumping on the quest to bandwagon uh, mm. just cause it was like, and, and you know why I was curious your uh, thoughts on it when you saw it. Cause I was just like, the resolution is going to drive me nuts until the resolution is uh, resolved, resolved to the point that I'm like, not going oh, I can still see screen door, you know, even though I know the screen door yeah. is gone, but it's still that t- I want high def text crispness, you know, all yeah. that. And then throw on top of that that it has the uh, processing power to actually do a really mm. good uh, imagery. Um, that that's why I'm just kind of like, oh wait, I'm not in a hurry. And I keep on saying this too. Until Zen puts out a VR version of Pinball FX, or yeah, mm. um. I don't see the rush because <laughs> no, why? I mean, you can you know? certainly use it on like VPX and VR apparently is amazing. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's, there are, you know, even though people say it's, it's easy to set up now and I'm sure it is, you know, it's still, it's still harder than just putting the game on and making yeah. it work. So um, yeah, I agree. I the think, one, um, the one interesting thing I saw though, they're now selling a new uh, speaker attachment, which is goes on the outside of the ear, basically, to do surround mm. sound that way, rather than okay. being an earplug, um, uh. which allows you then obviously to hear the your whole room as people are coming in. And I think this has to do with the idea of again going into AR, um, mm. so that you're not so isolated that you are aware of your room, especially if you have the screen showing you the room. Um, so I thought that was kind of an interesting approach. Um, so they're essentially like it's not like a, a headphone like these headphones. It's more like an array that sits yes. over your ears. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. That is the right way to go because it does have it does have uh, speakers built in that do have like a simulated surround effect in them. But they're but they're still, it's like noise canceling. Also, well, to an extent. I mean, if it's if it's not a enclosed cup like these headphones that I've got on right now, it's still going to be you're still going to get bleeds. So it won't be noise canceling, but if you're right, I think it probably does speak to their drive for AR experiences. And you're right, you don't want to have that disconnect from the outside environment. With In saying that, though, there are ways of managing that, um, such as um, microphone pass-through and stuff like that, because mm-hmm. the, the Quest headset does have a, a microphone built into it. Um, so you can do that sort of thing, just like you know, noise-canceling headphones have pass-through mode. Yeah. Um, it's same same thing. So... You know, there are ways around that from a hardware perspective as well, rather than having to sacrifice isolation of sound and give you a really good immersive experience. Because if you have noisy kids in the background and you're trying <laughs> to play a really suspenseful, like 3D shooter or so like you know one of those games, it ruins it, and you 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 really do notice it. I'm just like the, I think that's I I think I need those distractions if I'm came, playing a, a a tense game that's going to spook me because I, I <laughs> so you don't poop yourself th- yeah pretty much pretty much I need that <laughs> you know I need yep. that grounding in reality um, yeah. right yeah could be a fair point <laughs> it's the reason why I quit playing Bioshock the first time I ever <laughs> went through I was like nope not playing with the little sisters nope nope I'm out gone see ya bye 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 bye. Maybe one day. Um, I tried Half Life Alex in VR, um, which is well, you know what Half Life's like. Yeah. So in VR, yeah, nope, <laughs> too much for me. Uh, it's, it's it's hardcore, man. Uh, so did you happen to watch the 
the latest uh, Zen Pinball show? Um, I didn't, but I've heard enough about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, a much abbreviated Zen Pinball show. And this apparently is going to be their uh, tact going forward, according to Mel in the uh, mm. in that said show. He said, basically, rather than pad out episodes, uh, which then winds up taking them longer to produce the episodes, uh, it's going to be much quicker hits, um, shorter length episodes, basically concentrating on uh, whatever table is being released that month, uh, talk with the developer, um, should that be necessary for it and uh, basically that's it hit and run we're out and then now Good. and then they'll have the big episode uh which will then you know be the full tilt if they have a lot of news they want to cover a lot of different you know angles to go so it will be essentially i would imagine you're going to see that when they finally do their console announcement and that they're coming out of early release um, that's probably going to be so. the next time you see that kind of thing. Um, the big show, yeah, yeah the big show, because sure. this will this will allow them to not have to set up their studio, get Jack and Rose, or Jack, Bobby, Bobby. I'm like Jack and Rose. That's that's Titanic. Um, that is, that is Titanic. <laughs> Bobby and Rose. <laughs> that's good, guys. That's your challenge for the next uh, pinball show. I need the two of them on a door. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, it'll just be a lot easier to uh, produce the show and get it out there um, quickly. Oh, it makes total sense. Why bother filling it with fluff when you can just focus on you know the the facts of the matter and yeah. get it done? That's yeah. what people want. They've been wanting that for a long time in the comments. They've yeah. been asking for that format. So give the people what they want that's why so, we don't record every other week mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. you know why record a show when there's nothing really to talk about yep um what not for our sparkling personalities uh <laughs> <laughs> well you know i'm sure people would like to just hear us talk about stuff but probably not actually probably not um, probably not so yeah uh this episode in addition to announcing that factoid uh, also, they were announcing the uh, new Zen Original Homeworld, uh, Journey to Hilgara, which is mm. based off of, uh, I guess, an old... Well, I don't know how old. I know that there's, they're up to Homeworld 3. <laughs> um, Nin 1999, apparently. There it's you when go. the original one was released. It's, it's a very, very long-running RPG. Um, yeah, uh, so it's based on that. We're going to actually uh, do gameplay of it, and we'll talk about our thoughts while doing the gameplay. Uh, that's mm -hmm. coming up in just a little bit. Um, but instead, what we're going to focus on is uh, Zen released us another roadmap uh, for mm, the next. We like the roadmap. We like the roadmaps, and I think this roadmap is rather interesting, uh, especially given now that you all are hip to uh, the. The back wall clues <laughs> that yeah. they're giving us. Um, so I'll just uh, run through. Here it is. Uh, September, they're saying we're going to get a big remaster pack and then a surprise table release. October, mm. we're going to get a Williams release. And then in November, we're going to get a Zen Original and a big remaster pack release. So let's talk about the remaster packs first. Mm. What ones, what tables don't we have yet? So basically what we're dealing with here is we have the Marvel pack, obviously. Mm -hmm. We have the uh, Aliens pack. Yep. We have the Balls of Glory pack. Yes. Yep. Am I missing anything? <laughs> um, uh, there was one more, I think that I have forgotten as well. And it was uh, one of those sort of like three packs. Um, I can't remember. As I look up to the ceiling, there's no answers. Me. But if yeah, I had no, to imagine, no I know, if I had to imagine, <laughs> one of these big remasters is going to be nothing but Marvel. And the other yep. big remaster will be everything else. That's what my guess is. Probably because there's some Zen, there's some Zen originals in there that haven't come out yet. Um, I'm pretty sure, right? So it's like Epic Quest. That was the other one. Epic oh, Quest. Oh, that's and... right. We still haven't gotten certain yeah Zen those ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that was the other one. I'm just hmm. I'm just opening up our Blockade Discord because we were talking about that. 
um, on the Blockade Discord. If you haven't joined yet, you should. And Jared, um, how do they find it? Because that's what I just keep on getting questions asked about. I know I put it in so, the uh, I put it in the show description last time, and apparently the link didn't work. <laughs> uh, I've made the link permanent, so uh, the the link that I put into the latest show notes should always work. Um, it doesn't expire, so um, if you um, want when you when we're creating links, you can set like any expire in the link, so you just don't let anyone join you know, um, that you don't want to join, but I've just gone with the never expire. Um, so go and have a look at the um, the show notes for the last episode. And there's a link there to join. It's up the very top, like above the fold before you get down to the, um, uh, it's just below the description. So it's like really easy to find. That's um, uh, blockadepinball.com, folks, in case you're wondering. That's right. The, the one and the only website that we have. Um, <laughs> so you could do that. And there's also, um, I think I've updated the, um, get in contact with this page on the website as well to link to the permanent discord link as well. So yeah, try those out. If they don't work, let me know. Cause I can easily fix them. Uh, it's like a five second fix, but yeah, you, you should just be able to go and link to there. And I think the Twitter, the Twitter post I put out also linked to the, um, the the room as well so that's what i eventually um, copied and uh replaced in, uh, for last episode's youtube but um, that that first link that we that i shared did expire after seven days because i didn't know how to set the expiry oh. but now i do so that one won't work but the one that i put in the show notes now is a forever <laughs> link you can join it forever and ever ever oh um, we're a professional show are we link, links are hard <laughs> right in, the internet is hard it's a wonder it works at all so, anyway you so know. you're talking on uh, discord about uh the packs that we're missing yeah that's right so um we were talking through um uh, the there's actually uh, one of our members, Bowling Man eighty eight. He was talking about and what packs should we actually be looking at? Like he wants to buy another one thousand two hundred ticket pack. Oh, okay. With the lead up to all this content coming out, and he was talking about. I'm just looking at the phone now. You know what? What would you need to get? Like you know, he's saying we've got the Marvel tables coming out. Um, there's also things like fish tails as well, which we know from the show is going to be getting special treatment. Um in the uh when it finally comes out we don't know what that special treatment is so um that'll be interesting um so there's earth defense mars uh, epic quests that haven't come out yet so will we see those there's the bethesda collection as well and all the fox tables obviously which are balls of glory That's right. um, and yeah so the i mean bethesda is one of those ones that you often forget because it's just that standalone doom table um but yeah, I mean that's a that's a thing as well. So uh yeah, there's a few things coming around um that uh could fall into those categories, right? Yeah. Uh so that leaves mm. us then wondering what I mean, obviously we don't know which order any of these remasters are, but um No, could be any order, but I think the, it's... the sheer fact that it says big remaster pack, not just remaster pack. Uh, mm. I think a lot of tables are gonna drop suddenly, just like bam. Yeah, so I'd say unless you're on the pinball pass, you should probably start like looking at tickets and yep. working about what you want from those packs. Because um, uh, uh, so remember, that... there are bundling discounts. Yeah. So you know. So that leaves our September surprise and October Williams. So I find it mm. interesting that it's not a it doesn't say you know surprise Williams or surprise Bally. It's just September it's just surprise. Su surprise which yeah. oh boy that's so open-ended <laughs> which is like, exactly what we like here on the black Hate right podcast we like a little bit of speculation so. um because the other thing if you were watching like you said that uh, pinball show uh well mel was wearing a soccer jersey uh mm. sitting in between bobby and rose was a cup with a friendly little puppy that all of us know from World Cup 94. Striker. Striker. So, gee, I wonder, wonder what what's table's coming, coming up. up. <laughs> 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 Which is pretty awesome um, that, yep. that World One Cup would be on the tables. horizon. So there's the yeah. question. Since they've basically teased it now in the wall, mm. would that qualify as the surprise in September? Or... Would that be the Williams Tabor that they're talking about for October? 
Hmm. Well, that's an interesting question because if they've already given you hints, is that a surprise or is that? I don't know. That's what I'm it, saying. Well, for the astute among us, it, <laughs> it's not really a surprise because you know what it is. But I don't know. The other thing um, is, is that uh, the actual World Cup doesn't start happening until the end of November. Uh, so I would think promotion-wise, uh, which I know Zen was saying that they wanted to kind of start somewhat lining up with things. Um, yeah. Promotion-wise, it would make more sense for that to come out in October. Um, yeah, probably not September. It's probably a little bit too far away. Right. So from it. September, a surprise. Are we just talking a surprise license? Um, or like a surprise announcement about like a new license acquisition, maybe? No, because like it's going to be an actual table release. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah it is. It's so it's going to be... be an actual table release. So is it a uh, a new... Like, right now they have Williams Bally. Is it a new pinball manufacturer license? Like, is it spooky? Or who knows? Yeah, or... Well, yeah. It's not who Zacharia. Knows? We know that. <laughs> no. Um, I highly doubt it's Gottlieb, but... It could I be, think so. <laughs> you know. Um, I don't know. It, it, it's really kind of interesting what that could be. Or is it just a big license that they're going to throw at uh, a Zen original? Uh, I, mean, I mean, imagine. We just found out, like we said last time, that Embracer is now uh, owning Tolkien. What if all yeah. of a sudden they Ima had... <laughs> imagine if they <laughs> already had one to game, go. Right? Ready to go, Yeah. Surprise! Gee, that, <laughs> That'd that, be pretty awesome. <laughs> that is... Uh, just imagine the uh, internal machinations that would have had to result from that happening. Yeah. Like, they would have had to start developing a table before they even had the license for it. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty wild if they did. Um, I was also looking up, because I just... With regards to World Cup, and I keep on hearing, seeing all these posts about EA battling FIFA right now. Uh, mm. I don't know the internals of all of that, but I guess... FIFA wanted something like two hundred and fifty million for the license per year. <laughs> what? That's a lot of video games to sell. Apparently, NBA Two K, that license costs them in the hundred and fifty million range. Um, oh, jeez! I know sports games expensive. Uh, yeah, not real done, expensive. Not to be outdone by music games, apparently. <laughs> um, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you know. So, but anyway, it got me wondering. I was like, okay, so. Has Embracer bought EA and we don't, or not EA, uh, FIFA, and we haven't known about it? So I typed in exactly that in Google. And instead, what popped up was that whole concept of Embracer having purchased Square Enix. Square oh, Enix okay. obviously is the one who makes Tomb Raider currently. Okay. Which is, I don't know how that would work as pinball other than. Zen has done a Zen original, El Dorado, Ugh. and Shaman. Ugh. <laughs> um, hey, there's some more tables that haven't come out yet. Uh, Those ones I won't be racing to buy. <laughs> um, Unless they've had a massive graphical overhaul and sound overhaul. Which so, they won't so, they, so they've tried their hands at the adventure table. So it'd be, I mean, it's not like unheard of that you couldn't do an adventure table. Obviously, Indiana Jones yeah. is an adventure table um, that you could do uh, Tomb Raider. But in line with that, it turns out that Square Enix also had the Marvel license. Oh. Hmm. Well, Things coming okay. together, maybe? <laughs> they had the Marvel license for video games. Yes, they? they did. Oh, that's interesting. What did so, they produce that was Marvel-related? Uh, I'm just trying to I, recall I if there's to, any big Marvel games that are out there. I uh, Just Google search Square Enix Marvel and see what happens. But Yeah, um, yeah. They were saying hmm. that they were... Uh, that, could Embracer do Marvel games? And they were like, yes, it's just uh, pending on the approval from Disney. Well, again, we already know Zen has the approval from Disney. So maybe this has been what the holdup is, why we have not seen Marvel pinball with uh, the Switch. And mm, then it's maybe, old, you know, because it's quite possibly that Square Enix had that wrapped up nice and tight. Um, yeah, also, be. though, I'm thinking with Square Enix, you know, another little property that they were responsible for Final Fantasy well that's the first thing you think about when you think of um, Square Enix like it's Final Fantasy well it way. was I thought of it was Square back then <laughs> and then yeah 
Enix was the one that had Tomb Raider, and then, yeah, you combine the two, but... Yeah, definitely. So, Tomb Raider's it, really. Um, I mean, uh, sorry, Final Fantasy is the big one. But it would be interesting, um, a Final Fantasy table, because think about this, especially Final Fantasy VII, uh, earning your, uh, what do they call it? The, the Was it mana? I don't remember, but it was the, the, the orb jewels that you put in your sword that would allow you to summon, uh, you know, the various beasties. That would be a pretty epic table, I think, especially if it became one of those where your ball is changing colors and being glowy around the table. It's very Skyrim related. That's another one we haven't seen. Skyrim. Mm, yeah. Um, well, that's you know, so. Wasn't that part of the Bethesda? No, I no. think so. Yeah, I uh, think that was part of the Bethesda. I thought. No, 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 because it was. No, who does Skyrim? That's um. I can't it, remember. It was who it was Skyrim. It and uh, Fallout. Oh, yes. Fallout. And... Oh, no, it was Bethesda. It was. Yeah, there was Bethesda. Yeah, it was a triple pack. It yeah. was, yeah, Doom and those two. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, you're right. Bethesda is uh, is the one. But, yeah, you know, that's a very similar... That They could do some stuff like they did with Skyrim for that, like collecting mana and then, you know, saving it to, like, do something like Doctor Who did with the different doctors adding different elements to the play field and, um, you know, increasing play field multipliers or, you know, doing other stuff to the play field to modify it yeah. uh, and increase scoring. That's a, that's a lot of cool stuff they could do with that, that line of thinking. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Obviously, um, we won't be having to wait long because it's now officially September. So we'll find out what our big surprise is, it is. relatively soon. <laughs> um, uh, if you guys have any thoughts on what you think that relative surprise is be sure to comment for us oh god i hate mm, or that. do it in there the discord yeah, do it in the discord don't don't comment do it, on it's YouTube. way do better it in discord <laughs> yeah while comments and stuff are nice on on discord we are actually going to start referring people over to discord in yeah. the comments to continue the conversation because yeah. it's especially just so much better. because jared created that uh, uh an episode section so yeah yeah by all means pop into the episode section and make your comments about a specific episode like this one yeah, you can even make a thread because, you know, Discord's cool in that you can actually make threads. Um, and I think I've set the longest expiry to them. So if they don't have any action for seven days, they'll disappear. But if we keep bumping them, they'll keep alive so we can thread things in there. A little bit like a forum, um, which is some other related news we should probably mention, Chris. Oh, yes. Well, uh, Why don't you uh, go ahead and take care of that? Yeah, so um, on the subject of forums, you might remember a while back that we had an episode um, reminiscing about uh, digital pinball fans and the fact that it was uh, closing down for good, sad face. Um, but it's no longer closing down. Someone has contacted a um, friend of the show, Gord, um, who is the uh, the webmaster of that forum. And who apparently going to is pay... also a giant. Giant, giant... Uh, Pinball fan? No, is that what you're saying? no. I just saw on his Twitter he was talking about something uh, uh, related to what goes on in his neighborhood. He talks a lot about what goes on in his neighborhood. Uh, at which point he yeah. announced he's six foot eight. No, oh, that's really tall. Yeah. You know, side story: we had a uh, basketballer um, come and speak to Zach School, um, and he was he was closer to two meters tall. Yeah. And it's like, wow, man. <laughs> You, you would hate to walk into most places. Like, <laughs> right. the ceiling, the max headroom Constantly in those places is... Yeah. Oh, yeah, a bit bad. Yeah. Anyhow. Anyhow. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm tangent. My train of thought now. <laughs> yeah, tangent, tangents break me at the moment. I don't know why. Um, uh, what were we talking about? Uh, the things. forum. Oh, yeah, the forums. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, the someone has come back and um, said, hey, I'm going to pay the web hosting. Um, for you so you can keep the forum open and from what I've heard from Gord there's going to be no change to the forum no you know policy changes or anything it's just covering the hosting costs um, and that's it as far as I know so that's really good news there's a big body of work I actually got there the other day and uh, pulled down all of our early Blarcade episodes oh, to okay. sort of get, get them off there as much as I could um, and uh, yeah, I don't have to do that anymore because they're they're up there. I still did it though. Hooray! But, yeah, right. You know, we we have them. We we, yeah. we save them. But um, yeah, it's great. It's great to have the forum still remain because there's there's a lot of history on that forum. 
um, that you know it still turns up in web searches today if you actually do searches on digital pinball. So it's quite well indexed. All right, so we are going to shift over here. Uh, we're going to actually uh, show you good old Homeworld uh, and do a little yeah, we're gonna play, play and talk about it at the same time. Let me yeah. just uh, bring this on up. No, not that one. That one. Not the. That's the one. Like, not the infinite. Uh, the infinite, infinite mirror effect. Let's see. As it starts to load up for me. <clears throat> so as normally happens here, Chris can't really talk and flip. So I'm going to probably <laughs> do a fair bit of the yakking in this one. I'm sure that Chris will interject here and there. Um, but... All right. So right off the bat, you can see there, now Gearbox also has its own uh, section. Not that that yeah. really mattered in the past, because in FX3, there was a few that only had a one-section board. But it is exciting to think about um, that there could be more in these, in, in Paramount. Um, I would like to think that uh, they're eventually going to be filled up. But anyway. I, I think there's going to be some more horizontal tiles in there, for yeah. sure. Oh, this is the um, other interesting thing to note. Uh, Homeworld, you do not purchase with uh, tickets. Uh, this one is a uh, direct purchase from uh, the Epic Game Store. They wanted to try this out due to people uh. Uh, making their voices heard uh, regarding tickets. Um, so there you go. For those of you that wanted it this way, uh, you can have it that way. And you cannot That's interesting. get it via tickets. <laughs> Which is going to be interesting to see how that whole thing plays into cross-buy. Um, well, again, I think we're in early access right now. It could all change back again once we get into uh, <coughs> to regular. Ooh, Higara. Maybe this is just oh, an experiment. That's what I passing. think it very much is an experiment. Um, they can yeah. do a quick, a quick catch on data and see what's going on. I'll yep. just let this uh, scroll up. Um, no lie, I love the uh, the all the various insert lights and getting proper jewels in there. Under the yep, they, they do look really nicely jeweled, and um, the the overall feel of the table is like it's it's interesting. When I first saw it, I thought mm, it's a bit bland. But that, I was just gonna say it's a bit bland. There's not a lot of toy action going on there. Uh, there's no drop targets. You have a couple of stand-up targets. Um, off to the side, but it's a big, open, middle play field kind mm. of thing. A little um, bit like space, really, isn't it? Yep. Wide and expansive. The right? other thing that you'll note, uh, other than just the three pop bumpers back there, uh, this is a Spellorama table, which you know Jared and I mm. are not fans of at all. <laughs> no, Spellorama is a bit meh. Um, but it's not, put it this way, it's not <laughs> let spell Thunderbirds are go no. to get an extra ball. It's not to that level, um, but it's still, it's probably a few letters too many um, on there. All right, so let's do the skill shot here. So you give your plunge and you then shoot either the center or the ramp. So the center will give you one million, the ramp will give you two and a half, I think. Yeah, I don't even bother um, trying for that. Because right? it's... Cause it's it, it's very easy to brick it. Oh, so, yeah. so easy to brick it. Uh, so so definitely get a... Um, over there at the home. Yeah, that's right. You've also the home got, targets. I don't know if I can hit it on Q. Oh, I can. There you go. You got a scoop over there. Yeah, that's right. And that's... um, If you shoot that little loop that runs behind the uh, the ramp that um, was just shot there, you can actually light the carrier multi-ball in there, um, which is quite neat. Um... um a lot of center drains. A lot of side drains too. Yeah, it find. is a drainy like table. It is drainy, but the fu the funny thing is that the you get a pretty long ball save. In fact, I think it doesn't really go out until you actually drain a ball. Okay. Um, it's almost like guaranteed play for the first ball mm -hmm. or so, which you know it's it's going to be interesting from a grind a grinder's perspective, like a really good player's perspective. Um, Oops, it's. What one you'd like to play in view two? Yeah. No, I want to, uh, to just show. So I'll uh, free view it. Yeah, free view it. Um, <clears> take <throat> note of these little rings back here, because this is a hidden ramp. So basically, right now, if I shoot this ramp, your ball is going to come around, curve around here, and come down the uh, 
you know, feed right into your inlane. Same with the other side here. Uh, this Bentusi ramp comes up, feeds right down there. But yeah. if I shoot that little uh, sinkhole there, it up kicks to this blue ramp, which will then turn on this bridge that will then make it so that if I shoot this ramp up here, it'll feed right into that tube and come around and then drop back down the other side of that ramp. So it's kind of yeah. a... Uh, turns it into a loop, Yeah, essentially. turns it into a loop. Which is interesting and also a little bit risky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, also a little bit risky. Um, but, you know, it keeps you on your toes, I guess, yeah. which is which is good. The but, other thing uh, to note is when you shoot this middle pie thing and it takes forever and oh, ever and ever. Oh, hey, there you go. You got to do that. Okay, hold on. Watch this real quick. Six times. There we go. So now you can see that that ramp... Uh, has gone. Um, I'll try and shoot that one of these two ramps so you can see then what happens to the ball. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta hit that middle thing six times. That's what you do in order to start a mode. Hmm. There you go. So it went around. Yeah, you gotta go around. Um. So even starting the mode is a grind, and I say it. Yeah. I say that as a grind because of how long it takes for it to do its little pop. Yeah, I this, don't like that mechanic at all. This table just takes forever to do anything. Whether you're spelling on the ramps, getting a mode start, or... Hold on. Doing this again. Uh, I will say on that one, it, it annoys me with the DMD. Um, I think as soon as the ball goes into that area, the DMD you should get information should pop up instead. Yep. It lets the ball settle and then finally gives you the information as the ball is floating down. Which and is, drains. Yeah, and yep. drains. Which is pretty much. Late. It was too late. You you so should they be need able to, to do. You should be able to read the DMD before having a ball kick. If yeah, it's which getting is exactly what they changed. They changed that on the um, on the blue ramp, which actually has a name, but it makes no sense. Um, well, unless you're probably really deep into the game, but the the actual lock ramp. Um, they've changed the animation to be more front-loaded in that. Yeah. So before, it used to only display when it got into that little flip-flop section in the middle and drained and exited the ramp. But they've promoted the animation up as soon as it hits the saucer, which is what they need to do with that center hole as well. It just makes for a better game mechanic. And, you know, it might actually solve some of the problems of the delay that you have to endure every time you shoot that thing Yeah. Um, as well, because you've got something to look at it on the DMD. Because that's um, what I was going to comment. I'm not opposed to a wide open middle um, if you get gameplay like Richie Table, where it's just fast yeah. and a lot of combo action. Um, yeah. I've made no bones about it. I am a Lawler fan. Okay, watch this. Eight more shots to light a ball lock. To light a ball lock. Yeah. I, yeah. It's nine in oh. total. Or no, is it nine or ten? Ten shots total. Um, Ten shots total in order to light a ball lock. That means you have to hit that thing 30 times before you're going to get a multi-ball. No, that's not true. No? Uh, Am I so, lying? Yeah, you're lying. So uh, I actually decided to deliberately do that uh, and go for that multi-ball the other day. And yes, it was a grind. But once you've done, once you've lit the lock, you only then have to shoot it another three times and you will get a multi-ball. So uh, you basically, you qualify the lock and then you shoot it three more times and you'll get a multi-ball out of it. Still but a lot. That's a lot it's of lots. Favorite, like you think my about... favorite tables out in the wild are tables that by ball three, you should have had a multi-ball given to you. The yeah. fir your first multi-ball, it's like a, you know, it's like a drug. <laughs> the yeah. first one's free. Um, and then, I mean, because there's, there's plenty of the old Williams games that literally, if you have scored, like, done badly... Uh, by ball three, by ball three, it practically gives you the multi-ball on launch. Thank yeah, that's true. So, it's yeah, it's not as um, I don't know. It's it still is. You got to shoot a lot of shots to get things, but it's that aspect at least. It's not hard if you actually focus on a shot and and deliberately go for it. You can actually qualify it relatively quickly, and I think. Like I was, I was really when I first played this. When we first both got our hands on it in yeah. the the press period, we were going, "Oh dear, okay, this isn't great." Um, but then I thought, "Okay, why?" I started to question 
why do I feel this way about this game? I have no idea about the franchise. Like, literally, this was the first time I've ever heard of Homeworld yeah. ever. Because I'm just not into RPGs. So, that was problem number one. I was coming into blind with what this game's about. So, seeing a pinball table based on it, I was really losing a lot of context in what I was supposed to be seeing here. So, I went onto the Steam page and I had a look at some of the, the rolling video demos of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and I started to realize, okay, so this is an RPG, a space RPG, and it's all about basically surviving um, the journey. Uh, so you got to collect resources. In it. Honestly, the RPG is, it looks like a slow grind. Oh, it's so, a collecting resources game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a slow grind, and you've really got to watch your resources in this game. Um, all right, so you've qualified. I'll go and start the mission, yeah, but well, I'll continue this. Do you have one that you yeah. want me to try? Let's do the graveyard, because yeah, uh, that's probably the most the, interesting of the missions. Yeah, the graveyard's good, and this is the effect I don't get, but we'll talk about that fading effect um, in a minute. But going back to the, the whole premise of this table is I think that it's this, it feels slow and it feels grindy because that's essentially what the RPG is. Oh, geez, and then I it's it. oh yeah, that happened to me. You brick on one of those things and it's like bye bye. I didn't even dead. get to show at all what that was about. That's yeah, just... and now you got to do it. Six and now more I got to do six more times to get it going. Yeah. What a punishment, right? That's just so. Yeah, it is absolutely a punishment. Um, so yeah, it's and then you go wait for this thing. It, that wheel really grinds my gears for one of a uh, pun slightly intended <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but anyhow so this is why I don't play RPGs right because I hate the grind in these games I'm not about that I don't have time to sit down for eight hours a day and play an RPG and get qualified for um, the missions and get my resources up it just bores me to tears and I, I've got to say this table does kind of have that effect on me as well which is a pretty harsh comment i know but this table is just not one i walk up to uh in the arcade or in the pinball effects arcade and put money in because once you play it once you get a taste of the game mechanics in it and i just don't it's just not something that appeals to me um it's not this badly designed. That's the thing. It's just that it's code. It comes down to yeah. code, and this is what we keep on saying: is Zen needs to not be so afraid to touch the code of their games. There are multiple games mm. that would. The, the layout is fine. It's just a matter of the code being fixed. Uh, all right, I'm gonna yeah. pick something else other than. Uh, yeah, that one. Which was this one? Return to car. Yeah, that's not bad. That's where you got to destroy the... Um, so that fading effect that you're seeing on the playfield now doesn't work on that view, right? Because you see... Uh, look, it should... If you're playing on a lower view, that the whole... And, ooh, that was a lucky save, mate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and the, the whole fading effect works much better if you're down on a lower view because it looks like the whole table is sweeping across like the warp drive system in this game. Like... You'll see that the, the big mothership in the top right hand corner of the screen, when that when the game starts, it appears in a essentially a hyperspace yeah. um, sort of wave that goes across and it's a really cool effect. But it, in this table, the effect is broken because you see the borders of it. And I don't know, maybe the, the top borders are visible because that's the height of the pinball machine. So I see that that top board is coming along. It's the height of the pinball machine. So maybe you don't want an infinite height because there's a top and a bottom to the the warp wipe that comes in. But okay, it's still when I first saw it, I thought, oh, that's. Hmm. And the other thing too is that it should, when it wipes, the whole table should disappear. Yeah. Like the table, the, the entire table should vanish, just like the ship does. But it doesn't. It just sort of wipes over the playfield. Then the screen fades and it comes back up again. Like it's. It shouldn't do that. Like it should be an actual wipe, and then the entire table appears again, just like the um, the enhanced effects on Belly Williams tables. Like it should have that same wipe up and down the the playfield, like it does on the Belly Williams tables. That would be right. a really cool effect. But again, it, it's maybe it's maybe they wanted to do that, but they didn't have time to do it in this cut. But it would mean a much more impactful 
you really get the whole thing that you are actually warping to another area in the universe if they did that it just would be more apparent um that's my rant over about all that. right rant over so apart from me failing at uh getting a mission even remotely ugh. all right hang in there yeah um getting a mission close uh what you'll notice with your missions and i learned this uh not through play because uh, i was getting frustrated but by reading the uh, table guide on how to play this game most of the missions involve shooting all of the lanes and that's yeah. how you win the mission there's yep. like no that's... variation to that it's all the lanes are lit shoot all the lanes that's how you're going to end the mission yeah and that's incredibly boring um give me yeah. different combinations Underway. of things give me have them Underway. you know flashing lights moving kind of thing uh i mean because when you think about it attack from mars is similarly that way right yeah it is but then it also throws in uh, other things on top of that so that that's not your sole focus while you know shooting um there's multiple I don't even know what I'm supposed to shoot right now. Because I um, that Ben Tusi thing, and now I don't know what. Uh, I think you've got to sh you know, I don't even really I don't know. know. I mean, like to trade with Ben Tusi, so. What, things are blinking, what but. But everything's blinking. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, it I looks don't like. Know what, let's see. I've got kickbacks blinking, I've got random resource blinking, I've got these little insert lights blinking, but none of them are stop blinking when I shoot them, so I literally have no clue what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and that's, again, my biggest... Well, I shouldn't say my biggest complaint, but it's another need complaint. chase lights. Chase, yeah. like, chase each of those lane lights. There's a stack of three of them. Like, actually strobe them. And look, the, the ramps actually have, like, an effect. One of the things you didn't do... Uh, in this game, try and do the salvage mode on the right ramp, because this is one of my other big gripes oh, with salvage. this table. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you got to shoot the the spell salvage. Yeah, gotcha. And then you get this mode. Um, you probably would have already seen it in the in the previews for people watching, but you know if you play this game, but the, there's a whole mechanic in there where it, like it's a, it's a you know again you got to shoot all the different shots to get all the things, but the, the thing that really threw me the first time I saw it is the the, the fact that the ball gets this sort of a, a reticule around it. A oh, sort of a square. I know what you're talking about. It gets a square around it. And then as you shoot each of the ramps, what you're doing is you're, you're salvaging stuff in space so you can build up your resources, which I totally get. It's a it's a key part of this game, and you want to represent that in the mode. So that's, that's good in that perspective. But far out, like the, the distracting reticules around the ball it i just went what is this when i first played the mode like it is um really off-putting and it actually makes aiming the ball a very very different experience you've actually got to focus solely on the ball um so you can actually work out where the shot is because the the offset um are you the kidding target me? system what was that oh there it goes i was like Salvage wasn't lit, and I was like, "Are they really making me have to start from square one?" I was about to be. Well, that would mad. be that would be table flip, juicing. <laughs> but it was because oh, I, was, I was still in skill shot mode. That's why I was like, what? "Yeah, that's right." I was like, "Come on!" All right, my way. All right so you're nearly there, nearly finito. <laughs> oh yeah, and then you drain. Curse Luckily, you've got one more ball, not not to drain on. Hopefully, curse words. Although you know this is pinball, so there's no guarantees. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the the whole mode itself is really. There there we, we go. go. Whoa! So how visually intense is that thing around the ball? And number one, it it looks. I don't know. Maybe that's what it looks like exactly in the game. I'm sure that that's what it looks like in the game when you're selecting enemies. But but that does not translate to pinball well at all. But what's no. interesting though is. A bit of a inside baseball thing here is if you shoot the pop bumpers um, now, if you can get it up there, um, shoot the pop bumpers and see what happens to the ball tracking All right. um, when you go down the pop bumpers if it actually dribbles down into that hole and then comes back down at the uh, bottom of the playfield. So dribbling down, 
Um, and it sits nah. there and then, oh, look, disappears <laughs> and comes back again. So you can see how ball hand, there's pretty much a inside baseball about how they track balls on send pinball tables. Looking at that, disappears and then walks to that point. That's funny. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> lifting the veil. Do not, do, do, just don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain. So even here, um, though, I'm, I'm, I'm collecting salvage, right? But yeah. wouldn't it be better... And once I uh, go over an X for the fir or one of those boxes for the first time, uh, then it disappears from wherever I did that, right? But, yeah. hey, here's an idea. How about letting me collect all of them? Captured yeah, like... Like at yeah, the same time. Yeah. So now I'm I, there. I collected that one piece of salvage. Um, uh, let's go back to... Gardens. So, oh, this isn't what I was wanting. Never mind. I, was, I, was, I want the graveyard. But, um, oh, yeah. So now, look at that. We have little ships, and where are they? They're all blocking all the lanes. Yay. Yep. And so you still you still got the, the, the target around the, um, the ball. So you're actually <laughs> what I call in target jail at the moment because you can't actually... <laughs> You can't actually complete the salvage mode while you've got this on. Right. Um, but so, it's, still, or, it's still stacking it as if you could, except for nothing's happening too late. Well, can you? Can you actually shoot the shot and do it? Like, shoot one of the, the shots without a thing on it? Nope. So, any... Oh, no, you can. So no, you can actually it didn't do, collect the red. Oh, that time it collected the red. Yeah. Okay. So you can do... You can do a mode while you've got a ramp mode activated. So that's, that's cool. Um, um, I guess. But even still, I want to be able to collect... All of them. Mm. So let's see. Hold on. A few of them are out. Let's see if let's see if I'm talking out my butt or not. I'm gonna try and collect one of those other three red boxes that are available. Um, nope. So you can only collect one at a time, which again turns this into more spellorama mode. Essentially, um, it's not efficient playing. You no, that's. You're That's right, and then with how they want you to play it. Yeah, and you know I've seen that. That's been in some. Uh, I think it might have been Iron Maiden, by Stern. There was a, a mode, or no, it been Iron Man, one of the two. There was a mode that if you didn't actually complete it, you were essentially stuck in jail. Uh, in that mode. This mode. Yeah. Yeah, in that mode until you finished it, and it's just not cool. Luckily, this one doesn't do that. Although but, we are still stuck in salvage mode until we finish it. Secure. Until you finish it, yeah, you can't. You've got to keep on grinding it. But again, so it. here's where <laughs> I told Jared before he'd started playing this. I said, this is this is Mars 2.0, except for I still like yeah. Mars better. Um, yeah. Because it has kind of the same vibe. As, oh, what was that? That was... That was uh, a trading shot, i.e. Oh, <laughs> um, Mars has more interesting things going on. Truth be told. Gotcha. Yeah, I haven't played Mars for a while um, because I've been waiting to sort of experience it on FX and obviously mm -hmm. it's not there yet. But I do remember it. I played it on VR um, semi-recently and it's got, a, it's got a nice aesthetic to it. Like, the number one, it looks flashier than this again they're not they're not coding something or creating a, a, there we go. Group one uh, an experience that is supposed to conform to any sort of prior art so I guess they got freedom there but I don't know it's but sort even of beyond the looks I'm just saying the modes that you do are more varied like once you starting a mode on Mars is not easy but once you have the no, mode not. lit Secondary objective um complete. Once you have the mode lit, uh, it's not the same old shot over and over and over and over and over and over. No. And, over and that home and mode again. That home mode is is kind of unsatisfying. Like it's one shot. It's always the same place. Shoot that stand up that appears in that lane you just shot there, and you get yeah. it. So it's, essentially, it's a hurry up, target based hurry up. But like that's a mode. That's one of the things you need to qualify for wizard mode, apparently. Um, again, haven't got to wizard mode yet, so, you know. Again, this entire uh, time we've been playing, has anybody seen multiball? 
No. If have you, you actually playing, did, like if you were playing deliberately fish tales, shot for it? You would have seen. You would have had one by now. now. Okay, we see it. Yeah. Exactly. If you if you were playing Indiana Jones, you, you would have had multiple by now. Multiple by now, because it, essentially it drives you to it. So yes. it makes me wonder: is multiple the most lucrative mode in this game? Like, if if I was looking at it from 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 a design aesthetic about other ways of making pinball, it seems like multiple isn't something you should really go for here. Like the points are not there. Like, is the mission points? You know, I think the 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 Discord community has talked about this as well. They have actually suggested that. You, you get nothing unless you're actually in modes. Like each shot's like five thousand or something like that, until you actually enter a mode, and that's where the points start coming. So you've really, you've kind of got to be in modes all the time. And unfortunately, by way of playing the table, like you end up entering modes that are less desirable. Like you know, salvage mode. You go, oh, not again. It's a little bit like to me, salvage mode feels like video mode in Harley Davidson oh. pinball. Like you, yeah. you, you get it all the time, and you don't like it, yeah. <laughs> like because it's just like, oh no, not video mode again. You know, yeah, it's a bit like that with that mode for me. I just my least favorite thing. I just wish it was easier to qualify for. Good shot. Oh, yeah, that was quick. You really knocked that over. Amazing one. He just got them all. Um, so here's but, my thing though. So again, looking at this, I've got a random resource light over at the left orbit. I've got the launch lock, which I understand. I've got a whole bunch of vessels that are lit up, but I don't mm. know what they're telling me. Is, is it telling me I need to collect those? Um, what am I doing with it? Why are they blinking? Because if I shoot the shot, they don't necessarily disappear, I don't think. No, and also there's, there's, it's almost like you, you need to know what those inset lights mean. Yeah. Because like there, there's that shot behind the um, that loop shot behind the right ramp. That's actually a multi-ball qualifier. So you shoot that thing behind um, the ramp there, and you light the eject hole for a lock. But it doesn't scream that to you when yeah. you're playing it. Like it doesn't say, "Hey, this is like a really valuable multi-ball shot, you guys. You should really shoot this a lot." Um, but it doesn't scream that to you. It's like the same color. Like everything is blue, and I get that that is the aesthetic of the game, and you need to operate within the design parameters of it. But from a pinball machine's perspective and a intuitiveness perspective, it does nothing for it, and that's the problem. Like they're all blue, everything's blue, and they all blink at the same. Oh, and that's not true. They actually don't blink at the same uh, intensity. Like no, but again, the... what am I? I've got a carrier there for that little horseshoe loop on the right, and then whatever. What you got Ben Tusi lift lit now. Uh, so there's control. see the carrier. Yeah. See how it says carrier, but it doesn't say but, carrier multi ball. No, it doesn't it's, tell me anything of what I'm. Uh, usually, in any normal manner, if something is being lit in front of a lane, you shoot the lane. That thing then stays lit. That's yeah. Or, in any normal. <laughs> or it has a stack like on Medieval Madness, where it goes like, oh, you've gotten one qualifier, two qualifier, three qualifier. Now shoot the the castle or the saucer to collect that big score from doing that. But again, there's no indication that it just stays lit and it doesn't change in intensity. Like there's there's no to me, there's no clear indication about the priority in which you should shoot things in this table. And that's to me a miss as far as playfield design goes. Um that being said, it's sort of like you don't want all these Zen originals to play the same. No. And that's the other problem. Like, you want there to be variety. Here we go. Salvage mode jail again. Yep. You know, enjoy that. Um, <laughs> Warp all. Go. <laughs> um, so, you know, the, the whole... The, the way that this game sort of is engineered and what it's driving you to do it does it definitely does give you an rpg feel but skyrim was sort of like that as well and it still managed to give you varied gameplay mm -hmm. like skyrim was still very much an rpg style experience um i mean like you said let's face it you should <coughs> never go oh crap i started that yeah that's right and and there's a lot of oh crap i started days. that <laughs> Yeah. This is Freak Man. Uh, yeah. 
So, if you can't uh, guess by now, folks, we're not necessarily recommending this table. <laughs> no. Well, I I wouldn't rush out and buy it, unfortunately. Yeah, um, I mean, honestly, if you... If you if you got Pinball Pass, fine, give it a go. Yeah. But wait, maybe wait until it comes on rotation for this one, folks, and see what you think about it. Um, I'm not sure about this one, unfortunately. Me neither. It's... Yeah, it's it's not one like I I played it a fair bit this week, so we could actually have commentary on it. But that's probably the last time I'm going to touch it for a fair while. Um, uh, yeah, so yeah, maybe I... when it comes back in tournaments again, um, we'll play it. But you know, only if it comes into rotation because we have to. Like I said, I would like to see it just be. It's going to need another pass it code. And I and I think we need to just say this about a lot of Zen Originals. Let's let... I'm cool with putting it out there with the players. Stern does this all the time. They put it into the yeah. player's hand. They let players comment and say what they like, what they don't like. Obviously, if you have a real machine, the play field's not going to change, right? But you can change the code. No. You can make the table score and play completely differently um, you can add in new video, uh, new DMD, uh, all that jazz. And I would really like to encourage Zen to listen to feedback um, mm. from the players once they've gotten their hands on this. Uh, really find out what they like about a particular table, what they don't like. And then address it in code. Let the code yeah. dictate and try and make the table uh, more fun, a better experience. Uh, based off of that that feedback, um, you know, we've a said really good they, example. they did it with Epic Quest. They did it with Mars. Um, yep, they need to do it with this. They need to do it with this. Absolutely. Now, a really good example of that is Batman sixty six by Stern. Like mm. it was like when it was released, it was like super basic code. In fact, it was pretty much a Spellorama um, when it was first released, and people were going, "Why did I spend?" so much money on this really expensive super premium pinball machine when this is a code but you look at it now after literally two years of code refinements out in the wild uh with lyman sheets doing code work on it and it is an absolute stackable beast of a machine but the playfield layout hasn't changed nope same with um I you know Guardians something like that way yeah well a lot of those stern that um era of stern they were doing iterations out in the wild on the code yeah. and you know it made the tables fresh and the same thing goes with like brighter pinbot and brighter pinbot 2.0 like that 2.0 code blows apart what that game is like and i still haven't managed to experience what it's like but it's no longer left ramp it's a completely different game well and i've said the same thing regarding uh, cactus canyon um exactly obviously yeah, i haven't played right. the the latest thing but i played cactus canyon continued um, and it was mind blowing how incredible it made that playfield play, and the mm. sheer variety of shots that you were then required to do. Um, yep. So. So there's there's opportunity to take this from what could potentially be argued as if they were taking that approach. This is basically the like day one release of this table. It's, now it's, iterate it's on the rules. Nine zero on the code. And we need to yeah, get it up zero, to a, you know, a one point something. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I, I really hope that this is what's going to happen with this and they take a hard look at the the way that you qualify for modes and the way that some of the modes are structured um, and just speed things up. Because if the game was f faster to achieve things, I think that would save some of the, the challenges with it as far as uh, wanting to do... Like, and also change the way that either the the target selection thing works on the um, salvage mode or change how you qualify it, maybe make it harder to get, but like the points are more valuable or something like that. So when you're in the mode, it feels like it's something special, not just something you can get by shooting combos. Well, I mean, you know? it's real simple to me with that one. It's a very simple fix. If you collect one salvage and then immediately go cash it in it's worth a very basic price yeah but, but if, if you, you risk them, it 
and you stack and try and collect them all and then shoot the salvage, now you you're in for points. a whopper of a price. You have a yeah, whopper see, of a that's, collection. That's, that's such an easy change. So easy. And, and it's that would so make... minor, but it makes there have a strategy to what you're going to do. Is it collect It's risk-reward. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Which is something And that's that what Jack all Belly does. Williams tables. Yeah. Yes. It's it's what all Belly Williams tables do. They are risk reward tables. Like you can like great example, right? Yeah, you're right. Jackpot like casino run. Excellent example. But you know, in even in medieval medieval madness, mm-hmm. you've got or oh, do I cash in all of my multiple madness modes now, or do I bank them for something incredible at the risk of losing my ball? You right. know. Yeah, this it pinball is risk reward. Yeah. And this doesn't reward any risk. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not saying multiball should be handed out like candy. It's that no. first multiball. Give them a taste. Yeah. So then make they, it harder to qualify. Make it ten shots. And then the but next the first then, one should be five. Yeah, exactly. It gets more difficult. Yeah. And again, virtually every multi Molly Williams does this. The first time getting yeah. multiball is really easy. Uh if you look at uh Roadshow, it's so easy to get multiball going right off the or smack the dozer five times and right. you get a lock. But then and it then becomes you get second lock. Then it becomes oh you gotta smack it that lights it smack it again that sets up the lock you know and and then you gotta shoot the lock you know so it's mm-hmm. like it, it just becomes increasingly more so that you're not just dominating the table you know every single ball um, but now you're actually having to show off your skill in order to do it but that first should be easy uh, and then make the insert lights tell you something. They did a really good job of this on Grimm. Yeah, that's so right. We know Zen can do this. They just didn't with this. They just didn't I do don't this. Know why. This um, is a backward step in yeah. rules design. Yeah. Now, do we It's fixable. Actually, yeah, it's fixable, but do we actually think that they're going to change the code? Um, no. No. Unfortunately, probably not. Because no. they've got other, other fish to fry, and that's a real shame because this table has the has the layout there to make it quite interesting. Which is but, basically means they need a Lyman Sheets kind of person at Zen who's just... Well, they a, need the person to do... that did the rules of Grimm to take a second pass at this mm. is potentially what needs to happen here. Now, I say that without actually knowing who did the rules on <laughs> Grimm. So I might, I might just caveat that because it could be the same person. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, there you go. That's what we think about it. I think I'd like to say, and please tell us this either in the YouTube comments or in Discord. our Discord. Discord will be better. Um, but, you know, did we get it right? Do you actually feel the same about this when you're playing this game? Like, uh, it, it, are we on ball? Are we being too critical? Tell us, you know. We'd like to hear what you think. We'd like to hear if we've got the zeitgeist of a table right. So... Yeah. I mean, it would Tell be us. certainly nice if we could like every single Zen original, but we know from pure history of the Zen originals, that's not the case. There's plenty of them no. that we don't like. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, those tables that we don't like, others do. And this goes back to what Mel was saying about the whole thing they're trying to do with pinball effects. Like, some people like... And the, the other thing, too, about this game, it's pretty chill. Like, the the one thing that we didn't really touch on is that it's kind of... Like the music isn't vibrant. You're in like a a pretty sort of a chill feeling. Like you cruise around you space. You might most say of the you're time. in a state of zen. <clears throat> yeah, you could say that. But you know, that could be what people want. Like sometimes people don't want an in-your-face, you know, medieval madness style experience. So maybe they go to this when they just want to flip a ball around for a bit. And yeah, but if it, and do but when I want to flip a ball around a bit, I also want things to happen. True. And I don't need it in my face happening, but I want to feel like I'm actually making progress, not just grinding, grinding and chilling with some music. That's completely not fun to me. Mm. Um, and and that's my that's my biggest gripe with this table. Nothing about it is fun. I don't. I'm not. There's no mode that I'm like, oh good, I started this mode. I'm. There's no shot that is like, oh nailed it. There's nothing that I get satisfaction out of in this. There's no real fireworks when you actually do something really good in this game. It's very, like, there's no big flash of effects. Everything is very toned down and neutral. Even just think about Whitewater. When you mm. hit that crazy ramp waterfall shot, 
it's the whole table satisfying. goes nuts. But it's satisfying. Yeah. It's, you feel like, yes, I hit that shot. And all it yeah. literally is is shoot up to an upper play field, shoot the mini play field to the ramp. That's it. Yeah, it's shoot, not... shoot a wobbly ramp, basically. Yeah, yeah. But... but getting on that wobbly ramp is really, really cool. Uh, there's nothing here that I go, yes, got it, did it. No, it's like, so, mm, okay. And if and so if I don't have that experience just with the basic table shots around, then I need code to make it that kind of satisfaction. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I'm not getting. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Enough ripping that Well, apart. there's our not so... <laughs> I can't really call it a hot take because we've been playing enough of this that we've experienced... We haven't... Sure, we haven't got to wizard mode yet. And not, I find it I amusing. Care. Well, and I find it amusing that Zen is on their socials going, have you got to wizard mode on, on Homeworld yet? I go, nowhere close, mate. <laughs> At all. So, you know, if you've got to wizard mode on this already, tell, tell us what it's like. You know what, Jared? Um, I have an idea for a new uh, for another episode here. Just popped up mm-hmm. to me. I think we're going to have to work mm-hmm. on this because it's going to take us some time to go through and do this. I right. want us to pick our five Zen originals. So it can be Star Wars, Marvel, anything. Any Zen original mm-hmm. uh, that we think would benefit or desperately needs a code revamp. Okay. Where All right, we'll have we to think that, about this. that uh, with a new code that the play field is, is fine because there's some that we just plain don't like the play field. V12. Yeah, the play field is also um, not good. Yeah. yeah. No, mm. the, where it's good play field, bad code. So I think that's mm. what we need to do is that we need to... Uh, and to keep it... Do I want to keep it simple? I was going to say, should we limit it to what's currently af- available in pin effects or should because they're remastering? I'll leave it open. Mm-hmm. Wherever you want to pull from. Um, if you want to just go look at what's in pin effects and go from there, or if you want to look at pinball effects three, um, shoot, I'll even throw it into FX two just in case, uh, you know, any of those five tables that <laughs> isn't coming over suddenly comes over. Um, like we suspect probably that South Park will be coming. Um, oh, it's got to be at some point, right? Yeah, you would think. You hope so. You would that's hope fun. So. so anyway. That is, that is a good table. That is. And so by that very thing, folks in our Discord, yeah, we're going to promote the hell out of this. Do the same. Name your five tables that you think would benefit vastly from code change. A rules 2.0. Rules, yep, rules 2.0. Okay? There's your sign, yep. everybody. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. That being said, uh, what are we doing next time? Do we ever know? Of course not. But as usual, nah. it's up to Jared, who loves to do things like... Stuff and things, our favorite things and stuffs. Ye the free car. All right. Until then, (laughs) we'll catch y'all later. Bye-bye.